here with undefeated cruiserweight Denardo Minor. What's good, Denardo? What's up, bro? I I start off, you know, every interview with this question. Uh, how'd you get started in boxing? Man, I started boxing with uh, just specifically for fitness, and then uh, I started seeing I was good at it, and I continued pushing. I went ahead and went pro with it. What age was that? That was like 26, 25. Now, you had, no, you had no interest in boxing you know, in your teenage years. Did you play another sport? No. Yeah, I was strictly football and track. I didn't really do too many other sports. Is that where the, the, the Texas thing comes in at? It seemed like every, every, every guy from Texas, their first love is football. Yeah, I mean, Texas definitely, you know, created a love for football and, you know, uh, uh, just the competitiveness of everything. Like, we, we don't like to get beat. You know, everything big. We try and do everything big in any sport. And that's probably the biggest sport down here in Texas is football. Is there any aspect of football that helped you prepare for boxing? We to froze a little bit. I look at that. I mean, it's I can hear you, but it's still froze. Um, is there any aspect of football that helps you prepare for boxing? Um. I definitely say, you know, getting cracked, you know, time to get back up and do it again. You know, I, I wasn't a, a very big, uh, you know, senior. You know, I was fucking playing against guys that are damn near grown men, you know what I'm saying, pretty much. I, I, I came out of my high school year still like a little, you know, buck 75 playing tight end. So I wasn't a very big dude, but it definitely taught me that, you know what I'm saying, size don't matter as long as you got the heart. So it, it definitely helped me push past, like, the the physical aspect of, you know, being smaller. You know, what position did you play? I played wide receiver and tight end. Majority of the time it was tight end. You know, I didn't really have the best of hands, so they had put me on the line with the big boys. But, um, you know, I can hold my own. I was out there squatting with the, with the linemen and all that. Okay. Okay, I see you. Yeah, you must be fast. Now, oh, yeah. I mean, I mean, as far as, like, the 40. Yeah, what, what is your 40? My 40 in, in high school was, like, a good, yeah, like, a 4.8, you know, something decent. Yeah, that's solid for a tight end. Yeah. At the end of the day, you know, you can't be a solid tight end without hands. I was goofy, so, you know, I, I didn't really have the best of hands, but. I know how to take instruction. Were you categorized more of as a blocking tight end? Yes, I was. I mean, you know, you get the little tight end dunk. You know, I had, you know, I had bungees. I could jump. So, like I said, I was, I had strong legs. So, my my hops and 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 uh, stability, like you know, just being stern and staying on my ground, like that's two of my strong points as a tight end. And being taller, you know, they got a lot of – in high school, you know, they don't really have a lot of tall guys that want to play tight end. They want to go wide receiver or safety. All right, you're coming off of a unanimous decision victory against Juan Higuera. What's your thoughts on that fight? Uh, I mean, it it was definitely an eye-opener. It changed the game for me because I'm starting to see that I am excelling. Like, I'm not – just sitting stagnant, you know, I can see progression. Each fight is getting better, and he was just, you know, one that just kind of solidified that, I, you know, I have, you know, pretty good hands, you know, and I, that really on the cool was only a little portion of what I can actually do. I didn't really, I, I went out that fight just trying to get the win without injuring myself so that I could be ready for casing. So that fight could have, it could have ended a lot a lot more uh, tragically if I didn't have something of a bigger goal and 
you know what I'm saying, in hindsight. So it was it, it was fun, though, at the end of the day, like, you know, just the rush of knowing that, hey, this man is – he's about to take a loss to, to a, you know, underdog. <laughs> and also knowing that I'm about to go take – you know, trying to take another, you know, undefeated fighter's record. So <clears throat> it was just, you know, it was a rush. You know, it's just like, man, I'm, I'm really doing this now. Like, I'm, I'm not fighting, you know – subpar fighters like I'm fighting the top of the top in in my class at the time so yo you took an undefeated dude as a tune up yeah I mean at the end of the day like, it, it's just like sparring like I don't I don't me personally I, I I prefer not to spar uh guys that don't have uh pro background because they don't have the same mindset like their way of sparring and you know, the recklessness with helmets is, is not the same. So it's the same thing in the ring. Like, I want somebody that has something to lose for any fight that I take from here on out. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's you know, take, you know, fighting a guy that's just want to be a journeyman is not really conducive to me. You know, I want to I wanna get better. You know, I, the only way to get better is to fight other guys that are trying to get better, not guys that are just trying to make it, you know. So Juan was trying to get better, if not be the best. You know what I'm saying? So he was a good opponent. Um, I would say a few of my fights weren't as as high pedigree as he was, but most of my fights, beyond those, you know, couple like they've all been you know hungry fighters. They all have been pretty, you know, what I'm saying, tough opponents to to overcome and kind of change like my mindset on what I need to do next in the gym and all that. So <clears throat> yeah, undefeated fighter is what I'm out here for. I'm you know. If they if they offer in the fight, like I'm I'm willing to take it.